perhaps some of the gospel stories don't have the personal impact they should have because we don't fully understand the social environment in which they were originally written. Or perhaps we have a lack of understanding of Judaism. These stories were written over 2,000 years ago, and the main characters in them weren't Catholics, you know. They were Jews. This is pretty clear in today's Gospel, which is unique to Matthew. Whereas Luke's Gospel speaks of Mary's role in what we call the Annunciation, it is Joseph, not Mary, who is the exceptional person in Matthew. And Matthew concentrates almost entirely on Joseph. It's also important to remember that these stories were written about 50 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And the purpose is to convey a message of Jesus' teachings, not to chronicle his deeds. And Matthew and Luke are the only Gospels that even mention the birth of Jesus. So we have Joseph, an uneducated man, a carpenter, who is engaged, betrothed, as the story says. And in those days, marriages were arranged by families. And neither Joseph nor Mary would have had any say in the matter. And these engagements were contracts between the families. We are also told that Joseph is a righteous man, which properly understood means he knows the law and he respects it. In other words, he's a faithful Jew. But Joseph discovers that Mary is with child. He has no other information. There's no indication Mary told him of her situation, or if she did, how it happened. He doesn't know anything other than she's pregnant, and he doesn't understand it. All he knows or assumes is that she did something wrong. She made a huge mistake. Remember, he doesn't know she's the Blessed Mother. The Jewish law in Deuteronomy is very clear. If a woman is found to be with child, not her husband's, she is to be stoned to death. But that's not what happens. We see here that Joseph is willing to set aside the law out of love. He decides instead he will divorce her quietly. He isn't willing to expose her or her family to shame, not to mention those stones. Joseph places respect, love, and compassion before the law. But, and this is important, the story says he made this decision before the angel appeared to him in a dream. Now what does that really mean, appeared in a dream? Does that, oh, is it referring literally to dreams, those movies that play in our mind while we sleep? If someone or something appeared to you in a dream tonight and gave you advice, would you be likely to act on it? Drew, Drew, <laughs> you're not afraid. <laughs> Sell your house. <laughs> Take the patterns with the points. <laughs> I don't think you would. I know I would. So perhaps dreaming represents a deeper level of listening, where prayer often happens, where we hear the inner voice in our heart. Maybe the dream represents a deeper knowing, a profound spiritual knowing, Joseph trusted that intuition, that voice in his heart, over what was written in books. And that was quite a radical and subversive message at that time for the Jews, and it is for us today. None of us, especially if we were brought up Catholic, were taught to trust what we find in our hearts, to trust our dreams. We weren't given that kind of freedom. We weren't even taught how to go into that inner place and listen. We were taught to follow the rules. The rules are what we use as a model for what to do and how to live and how to act. Jesus spoke about this quite a bit. 
He often criticized the Pharisees for interpreting the law superficially, for following the letter of the Jewish law, not really the spirit. Jesus said to them, you wash the outside of your cup, but the inside is full of greed and selfishness. So Joseph makes an act of faith and trust. He believes in Mary's goodness and his own. He believes all is well, despite all the evidence to the contrary. He doesn't think this isn't fair or she needs to be punished. He doesn't even require her to show remorse. He lets go of fear and surrenders to the presence and action of God. He, like Mary and Luke's story, is saying, let it be. Let it be done. This surrender was a gift for Mary and Joseph, just as it is a gift waiting to be received by all of us. But it requires our letting go of our sense of righteousness and superiority. That is the path that Jesus models and speaks of again and again throughout the Gospels. Both Mary and Joseph did not know what the future held, but they made a decision to trust God and risk everything. They acted out of faith, not certainty. They were able to hear and receive a gift because their hearts were ready to embrace the unseen and the unknown with courage and grace. Imagine if this Christmas we could do the same.